Hello, Dr. Paul. Hi. Well, thank you for letting us come to your office today. You know, um, we at Health Freedom USA have been great supporters of all of your work for health and food freedom for many years. And we really appreciate it. to wonder about what this government does. All of a sudden, you know, the government intervenes and said, you can't sell milk across the state line. And I thought, this is preposterous. And, and even though it's a small number compared to the many millions of people, it's a very important freedom message for me to, that people have a right to buy and sell milk across the state border. You know, as we legalize the Constitution on this, uh, you know, the, it should have gone without saying. I'm sure when the Constitution was written, the founders never thought for a minute that if you happen to live on a state border, you couldn't sell farm products. The Interstate Commerce Clause was an important clause they put in the Constitution because they wanted a, a free trade zone. They wanted the 13 colonies so that people could move goods and services and people back and forth and uh, make it one country in that sense, but retaining the sovereignty of each state. So the Commerce Clause was to break down barriers to make sure that one state wouldn't prohibit the importation right. of raw milk. So they turn, they turn the Constitution on its head. The government comes in and says, oh, we have the right to regulate commerce. But, right. but that's they to make it regular. Yeah. That's to make it regular. That's yeah. not to prohibit but they, to license and Yeah, tax. that's right. They, they prohibit it. And so therefore, uh, it sounds facetious, but it's absolutely true. We're just trying to legalize our freedoms that were natural to us and given to us and guaranteed in the Constitution. But I guess we have to fight every single battle. But I see it in the context of total freedom. People should have freedom of choice, whether they're in one state versus the other, what they do with their lives, what they do with their money, and what they do with their bodies. And, uh, and some, some people think that's way too much freedom. You know, I like people to assume responsibility for themselves and make their own decisions. They may make a mistake sometimes, but it's a lot better than when the government makes a mistake, like they do on this, they make yeah. a mistake and a lot of people are injured. Oh, they're raiding Amish farmers. They're doing all sorts of terrible things. The FDA is acting in its usual lawless issue of individuals who like alternative health care and nutritional right. products and vitamins, that they have the freedom to advertise. And this, this is a constitutional issue too, because what has happened over the last 100 years or so, they decided that speech is divided into two parts, right. uh, commercial speech and political speech. Right. They do a fairly good job on political speech. You know, we're allowed to read to communism and all this kind of stuff. But when it comes to commercial speech, we have to have prior restraint. We have to examine what you say. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, I imagine you've never noticed that sometimes drug companies get better protection than small individuals who might want to sell some vitamins. If they say one thing, that this vitamin prevents this disease, then all of a sudden, oh, you better be careful and we'll put you out of business and we'll raid you and take your product. Well, I've noticed that in my law practice over the years where I've represented many of those small, small time purveyors of, of nutrition. That's absolutely true. One of the things we're doing at Health Freedom USA is we've set up what's called an action item to allow people to send emails to their members of Congress and asking members of Congress to become co-sponsors. How important is it for, for citizens to speak up on this sort of freedom? Well, this, this country and this government is in a big mess and there's reason to be pessimistic. But if we give up on that, the ball game is over because they already run rush shot overs. But when the people get annoyed enough, they can make things change up here. I think as an example of uh, there were some positive things came out of the Tea Party movement and there was a change in the Congress. So the people were angry and upset and came Still out. Are. And and that's what they have to do. I don't have the clout around here. I don't have political clout here in Washington. But I take for instance that bill I worked on on transparency of the Federal Reserve. Right. That came from the grassroots. Right. The people, you know, got behind it and they called their congressmen. They'd go to their meetings, they'd email them, they'd write letters, they'd talk to their staff. And that's why they got on my bill. Right. We uh, call that pushback. Yeah. Well we say, we that's, say that's pushback what you need. And it, and, it, and it will work and we don't want to ever give up on it, but we have to have our ducks lined up. We have to have the people to do it. They have to know what they're talking about. They have to know how to defend it. Not only for their personal interests, like I right. want my right to drink raw milk, that's one thing, but they have to put it in the context of this is part of what freedom is all about and what our Constitution is about. And if it's put in that context, it should be pretty hard for whether they're Republicans, Democrats, liberals, or conservatives, for them to object to this if they have enough people knocking on the door and say, we've had enough of you guys, let's get on the ball and change the law. Thank you, Dr. Ball, that's extraordinary. You're welcome.